Ladies and gentlemen, once again, XRL in its X3 division is returning to Zandvoort, a circuit that has hosted a significant amount of chaos in prior years. Now, on a new game, we could be looking at a whole new set of scenarios. I'm your host for today, who's Race Insane Leader 13, and joining me is XRL Torpedo. Torpedo, well, we don't really have to go too hard into recapping what we've seen earlier this weekend. You and I were in the booth together yesterday for Dev. And it was a pretty chaotic race to the end. Yes, it was, and we'll probably, hopefully, we'll probably be seeing the set, uh, almost the same for today's race at, in X3. So, big thing with X3 is right now we have 16 drivers on track. We might get filled up a little bit more, but I'm not going to put crazy bets on that. As it stands right now, though, Netherlands, the circuit Zandvoort, has been a very, very difficult track for overtaking on. But the overtakes here, when they happen, have been absolutely amazing. Yesterday, we've seen overtakes happen in the curves, although not with some controversy. We've seen them happen on the backstretch, which hardly anyone thinks can happen. And we've seen the dive bombs using DRS assist going into turn one. It's been phenomenal, to say the least. In, yeah. Excuse me. Indeed, yeah. Alright, so, one other thing is, before we get too far into the race itself, I do want to go ahead and look at the points battles as it stands right now, as I'm trying to get that pulled up right now. The championship fight has pretty much taken a very, very solid direction to who is or isn't going to contend. First, as normal, we're going to talk about the manufacturers or teams championship. At the bottom is Scuderia, Alfa Tari Honda. They have 48 points. Ninth is Alfa Romeo. They have 59. Williams has 65 points. There's a tie for six between the Alpine and Haas teams with 77 each. McLaren has 90. Mercedes has 104. Red Bull has 113. Austin Martin has 132. And Ferrari has opened up the gap. They have 165 points. Points right now. Then you go and look at the Drivers' Championship. Shelby taking home second yesterday helped him significantly, but going from the bottom to the top, JL Bend and Constant Jet still have yet to earn points this season. ITZ is still staying at a single point. Plastic Love has four points. Trey, 9530, has five points. Then Fratters has seven points. Dave Ewart, 23, has 10 points. XRL Pingu has 12. Wild Nissan GTR has 19. Ocean Lion 08 has 23. Boothy 116 has 25. Ninth in the standings is XRL Flavor with 30. Collie Boy has 34. XRL Snake has 41 points. X Hits the Spot has 47. Schumacher SF7 has 49. Then you get to your main four championship contenders. XRL Fiend has 77 points. Stone Shuffle has 80. XRL Gussie has 109. And Shelby IX Spark has opened his gap just a little bit. He has 115 points. So, now as we see the clock ticking down as we are preparing to get underway for qualifying itself... Word is that Schumacher SF7 has been having a little bit of issue trying to get his wheel to properly work. I don't think he's here with us right now. He may have backed out to try and get it properly reset. So he may be joining us very shortly. 16 drivers, so that means the top 15 advance, as it stands right now, only one driver will be knocked out. All it takes, frankly, is just somebody to have an accident somewhere on track or someone to have to serve a qualifying ban. And Q3 would basically become a glorified practice session. Yeah, and let me see. Should be gained on circuit in about 20 seconds here. 
One other thing of note, yellow flags actually were a very, very big element of the dev race yesterday. And we saw drivers taking some very unique tire strategies in route to their initial victories. The winning driver went medium, medium, soft on his tires when a lot of people were saying medium to soft or medium soft, soft was the way to go. And the way reason he was able to do such a unique strategy was because there were so many yellows that kept bunching up the field and giving him opportunities to pit. It basically meant that he wasn't really suffering too badly despite having poor tire strats. Um, yeah. Plastic Love, I think. Yeah, Plastic Love has got a qualifying ban for this race uh, from Belgium. Some Shuffle right, has one as mind. well, but he is not in this race. Um, With Stone Shuffle yeah. not being here, that's going to take a massive negative hit for his championship hopes. It will drop him to the back of the four drivers who are vying for the title. Here is Plastic Club's teammate, Extra Augusti, coming out into the track. We are anticipating that Schumacher SF7 is going to try and jump in, so we might get a 17th driver coming into the party. But if not, this is basically a glorified practice session. Everyone just needs to get out there, set a lap time. It could even be a two-minute, ten-lap time, and they'll be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. It would be an interesting thing, though, to, pat to see if anyone will go and put the hammer down like if like because there's got to be like a couple of drivers that don't really know what's if uh that plastic love's got a call fan back this is true and again with the threat that one more driver may pop up that having two drivers or one even one driver still trying to look in could cause a little bit of chaos in the back we're looking at guys like extra flavor who aren't who aren't typically great in qualifying trim so it could cause some interest there what i would do though considering that you have 16 17 guys and you're basically unless you're really off pace and can't figure out the circuit at all i would go ahead throw on a set of soft tires fill the car up as much as i can and just go just keep turning laps the entire time guess if it means i turn nine laps out there on the circuit turn nine laps use this as a chance to get a feeling for what the car oh, oh a mantic me had an accident oh no and now and pinko's had an accident the exact same part of the racetrack oh, no. i'm pangu as well pangu right yeah pingu spun upon coming upon the incident but Pingu didn't hit anything, but Mantic Meerkat, the first driver out in the session, it was not a great day for him. Oh my god, and there's a Ferrari out and out for a male that's had an accident coming out of the final quarter. No! Oh my god, there goes the Haas and very nearly hit them both. It's gone to complete chaos here. I think that's Collie Boy. No, it's Dave Ewart, who is just now getting moving. Pit Dummy Smoke has come in. Everything has already gone to complete chaos, and we're barely two minutes into the qualifying session. The struggle begins for these drivers. The run off, and that is Plastic Love on his outlap. Uh, so after this, outlap, Breezy has just had a spun in. as well. Breezy has spun in the same place that Meerkat and Pingu did. Gusty 111.995, and the other Red Bulls just trundling along the circuit. I'm gonna try and get Mantic Meerkat in here real quickly. And see what happened that took him out so early in the session. The first of what's basically been five different incidents very early on in qualifying one. Yeah. Oh, the Mercedes. Boothy, Boothy. Boothy has just had an incident. Trey has had an accident as well. So we're in seven and seven different accidents, seven different accidents, and we're only about four minutes into the session. Only three drivers have been able to set a lap time. All right, coming to the party right now is Mantic Meerkat 77. Meerkat, go ahead, include your audio. Big accident there. What happened? big incident there, but you are not alone. There have been already seven different accidents that have occurred on track. 
So now the question is, do you think you can rebound from this and get back up into the points paying positions? share your experience and what happened out there. It's a shame to see you knocked out so early after the fantastic qualifying run you did in the rain yesterday. Hopefully we'll be able to see you do better in the race now. Alright, and while we were talking with Meerkat, Dave Ewar hit the wall coming out of the final quarter, damaged the front wing and had to dive into the pit lane in the process. Now here comes Twitch Boys. He seems to have an issue that he's coming into the pit lane for. He's out of fuel. He has burned himself dry. So he definitely went hard with his lap of 112.209. But only four drivers have set times thus far in the session. Shelby, it's not gone very well for him. He has had two different accidents already in qualifying. One of them on the back straightaway, one of them coming out of the final corner. Good news for him, though, is that he's still on track, still able to turn laps. Your points leader is absolutely struggling out here, much like it seems like a large chunk of the field is. And that is... There is another car that's had an incident. That's Collie Boy, who's just had an accident, and he's out! And that's coming out of the first hairpin. That car is completely destroyed. Collie Boy had set a lap time just a lap prior, and now he's out. There's another car. That's Neon, who has just had a spin there in the final quarters as well. This right will have the play just go into Q3. We'll have enough drivers for a top 10 shootout. Yeah, try and get call, uh, would you be willing to try and get Collie Boy in here to see what he has to say as Neon crosses the line with a 128.029. Pingu has also had an accident somewhere on circuit in his lap. He's only set a 124.465. Davey Wart's on another outlap right now. Boothy, one of the best qualifiers in X3, is currently in the middle of a lap right now. Gail, Ben, and Gussie have both retired from the session in pit lane because they feel that there's no need to risk the car. Rear wing pops up for Boothie at the line. He'll set a lap time of 112.335. So comparative to competitive com with his teammate at the moment. XRL Fiend and Alpine is in the middle of the lap right now, as is Trey. 9530, 49.793 at the end of sector two for the Mercedes. Chubby Spark goes to the top. It took a while, but he's finally at the top with a 111.804. We saw him dev yesterday, and we saw last year at X3 at Zanvoort that starting on the front row is imperative to gain a good run in the race itself. Trey now goes to the top of the 111.588. Dave's, Dave, Dave's caused the others the other spin. Heading out of turn one. Oh, and Flavor has just had a, well, Flavor's just pulled over. I'm sorry, I take that back. Flavor's pulled over. So many different incidents on the track. We have fewer cars on track now than we did in Dev yesterday, and it's significantly more chaotic. We see Trey has come to a complete stop to let other drivers pop by. That's Fiend who's going to try and slip by. Fiend has just gone to the top of the 111.541 now. Ten drivers have set their time, so right now it's between Dave Ewart, Fratters, and Flavor. And frankly, those three just need to set times, and they will be locked in to the next round. Dave right now is clean track ahead of him and Fratters is the driver right behind in the McLaren. Schumacher SF7 hasn't appeared yet. We're going to go ahead and ride silently on board for a full lap with Fratters to see what a lap is like around here at Zanford.
lap on Dora Fratters, 115.644, and he definitely was chasing that car through the final corner. Well, yesterday we saw only 13 drivers advance from Q3 into Q, I mean Q1 into Q2. It looks like we're going to see the same scenario here because right now all Flavor has to do is cross the line, set a time, which he has done, and that's it. All 13 drivers you see on track now will advance. Yep. Indeed. Um... Also, I checked. It looks like Schumacher SF7 will not be joining us due to significant wheel issues that are going on. Oh, and Breezy's that is Breezy. Breezy has gone off. Yep. Fratters and the McLaren has also calmed it down a bit there on the back straightaway. And the only three cars on track, it looks like they're all on cooldown laps at this point. They all know that they will advance. Frankly, we could see an extremely early into Q1 if everyone in pit lane all agrees to go ahead and end their session now. We could go to Q2 quite early. Yeah, we could. Um, there goes, uh, yep, Fridays goes into the, uh, pulls into the pit lane. Breezy seems to be going for another lap. And flavor as well. This is a very risky move. There's not much to gain and a lot to lose by staying out another circuit. However, they do have the advantage of having extremely clean track right now. It's literally only the two of them on the circuit, and the distance between them is about 10 or so seconds. Weezy trying to break into the 112s right now. Fingers is the latest driver to the car in the pits in the session, and he's backed off. Rosie? he? Uh, I don't think. Uh, yeah, he's backed off. Breezy's backed off of his lap. Flavor is out of fuel, so he's not going to be able to go. Dave Ewar has retired in the pit lane as well. Breezy's coming yep, in. here comes Breezy. Alright, so now we just have six drivers who are in pit lane who have yet to retire from the session in order for us to have an early advancements into early advancement into Q2. But as of now, it's Mr. Neon who is at the top of the time sheet. He has just retired. Then XRL Fiend, Trade 9530, Chubby Spark, Gusty, Breezy, Twitch Broys, Boothy, Delbend, XRL Pingu, Flavor, Fratters, and Dave Ewart with Plastic Love not being able to advance to serve a qualifying ban. Call it Boy having an accent after he set a competitive lap, and Mantic Meerkat who had an accent before he could even get a lap in. We're just waiting on about four drivers to retire. We're gonna end this session excessively early. I'm honestly impressed. Yeah. Well, I think it wouldn't have ended early if Plastic Love got that qualifying ban. From Belgium. Now, I do agree. It probably wouldn't have. It yeah. seems like we're only going to have 16 drivers for today's race as well. So they may elect to run out the clock to see if another driver ends up joining late. But I'm not going to put a whole lot of bet on that. No. Nah. Right now, it's just the Aston Martin boys, Twitch Roys, and Boothie, who have yet to do a retirement. Alright, Twitch Boys has retired. Boothie has not yet, so we're just waiting on him. Well, um... Very interesting first qualifying session, to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I guess we should go ahead and start turning our focus to the tire strategy. 
uh, with all the yellows we saw, with all the ends since we saw here just in the first five minutes, though, I'm going to be honest, you probably could run anything that's not a hard tire and probably be fine. Like, that's the other thing. There would be likely be so many yellows that it won't matter. There's your lineup. The, oh, Chubby Spark actually has a penalty that he will be serving in the race. Five grid spot penalty. That's going to hurt his championship most significantly. That probably happened when he had that instant with the Alfa Romeo coming out of the final corner. Um, yeah, well, um, let me just check. Yeah, grid penalty. They, they be one. That could really up in the championship fight for sure. We saw last season in X3, although it was a shorter season, the schedule was really shaken up. Torpedo, you seem to be having something wrong with your mic. It keeps stacking up real badly. Um, but it does seem very likely that this could be the race that we see a change in the championship happen. Last season in X3, it was... Mazda in the Ferrari and Whippy in the Renault going out for the title. And then, although Mazda came out here with a second, this was the last good run that he had for almost the entire rest of the season. He just collapsed afterwards while Whippy walked off the championship, taking him four victories in a row at one point. So, <laughs> the game automatically advanced plastic love. I think I think, find that absolutely hilarious. But he will not be partaking and turning laps in the session irregardless. First driver to get onto the circuit, though, will be your points leader, WIX Spark. They're all electing to go on the soft as well, like the drivers that are out on the track right now. Only Dave Ewar is fit the medium. On my screen, it shows that Shelby has mediums on also. Oh, Boofy's done the same. So maybe they're like going on the fact that they can go long distance on softs with like safety cars and that. I don't know what they're thinking. It seems like a very reasonable bet. Although I will say that the first yellow flag we saw in yesterday's race was a very abnormal one as five different drivers didn't go off the line. Three of them stayed for long enough that actually forced a yellow flag and one of them would get disqualified for quote parking in a dangerous section. So I, mm -hmm. If that's anything to go by, there's no guarantee we're going to have a yellow flag right at the start of the race. We could very well see an event where the field gets very spread out very quickly. And Chubby I Spark just brings up the banking of the final quarter. Opens the DRS and has begun the lap. Chubby needs to do everything he can to try and get pole position because of the five spot grid penalty. He's going to be buried in the middle of the field, irregardless. Mm -hmm. Starting six obviously would be better than starting 16th, but still, it's imperative for him to obviously make it into Q3, but also get the pole spot. The only other serious thing I could consider if I was in his position would be electing to bomb out of Q2 and start dead last and just be slow enough off the line to let everyone else crash out. Thing is, that's a very defeatist way of looking at it. And while one of his championship rivals are not here with him today, two of his other ones are, and he couldn't afford to just, you know, back into an eighth or ninth place finish if his two rivals run, end up taking home podium spots. He has a championship points lead, but it's not that big. Yeah, and there's like one mistake from Chubby or a race that he has to miss, and that points can be diminished. Uh, oh, that's the old flag. Let's have the Red Bull of Gusties letting the Aston Martin buy, but here comes Chubby Ayak Spark in that final corner. Opens that DRS. The end the lap. The time that everyone else will be chasing will be a 111.710 on the medium tires. JL Bend is one of the drivers who are out there on softs. I'll be interested to see how they compare. Another one is the other Haas of XRL Pingu. But Twitch Boys is the first one on the sauce to cross the line. It's only a 111. Oh, Fiend Feed Spawn. And he's lost his whole wing. He's not all right <sighs> of the pits. And he had just begun an outlap as well, so it's going to take a lot of time for him to circle all the way around the track and put another wing on. Flavor now sets a time of 113.523. 
needs to be careful because there's still going to be faster traffic coming up behind him. That's Fratters in the McLaren shooting up right now. In fact, Fratters is on an ag lap, so. Fine, just to heat the tires a bit. Gusty in the middle of a lap right now. 50.098 at the end of sector two. Almost everyone who has not yet set a lap time are on medium tires. And most of the people who have set lap times are on softs. So, very interesting dynamic we're seeing at the moment. Gusty crosses the line. It will be a 111.890, and that's an Alpine. I believe that's Fiend who has come to a dead stop there. Yeah, yeah I think off circuit to a stop. Fratters is now beginning his lap. Breezy, Neon, Fiend, and Trey are all in the middle of fine laps right now. Pingu jumps up to a 113.170. Now see Flavor retiring into the pit lane. Now Mr. Neon is beginning his lap, as is XRL Breezy, and Fiend is going to bring it into the pits to prepare the wheel. There's still a little bit less than 10 minutes in the session. I think he doesn't have to worry too much. Fiend can get a new wing on without too much of an issue. Fratter is clabbering over the curbs there in Sector 2, taking it very aggressively when we've heard nothing but complaints about the curbs. And that is a Aston Martin that's gone around. I believe that's Boothy. Yes, Boothy has had a spin in the first corner. No damage to the car. He will be able to continue. Now here comes Trey beginning his flying lap. I'm also watching Fratters coming into the final corner. That car did not look very happy in the banking when he set his lap in Q3. He seems a little bit more steady here in Q2 at the line. The McLaren will set a time of 114.292. The slowest lap time of everything we've seen thus far. Here comes Breezy. The line. Oh, and he spins! And he's into the inside wall! And into the outside wall! Oh. Breezy's car, and he will come into the pits, and now another Aston Martin, that's Boothy again, I think, yes, Boothy has had another instant there in Sector 2 as well. Well, as it stands right now, nine Fratters drivers have set lap times. Sector, beginning of Sector 2. Riders had just set a flyer lap. There doesn't seem to be any damage on that car. It just seems to be an aggravating spin. But irregardless, chaos continues to reign here as Trey, 9530 in the Mercedes, is coming to the line. The rear wing opens up. He will set a time of 1.995. Fiends back out again after that. Um, it's the little spin. And that's Dave Ewart in the Alfa Romeo, who's up a little bit ahead of him on the circuit. Now we see Fiend pull over and let Fratters get by. So that means that Fiend has absolutely no one behind him hounding him. He doesn't have to worry too much. Davey Wart now begins his lap as Fratters is going to bring it into the pit lane. Fiend begins his lap. Breezy is still in pit lane. He's not yet made a move to get back onto the circuit after his accident earlier. As it stands right now, mediums have a slight advantage over the softs and the 10 drivers who are in. Fratters with a 114.292 is on the bubble. And it's Dave Ewart and XRL Fiend at the moment who are positioning themselves to bump him out. Dave's just come completely to a stop. And he's out. He's out, he's out. Yeah, what happened? Did he crash? I didn't see any wreckage or anything. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, he crashed out. Yeah, let's try and get him. Alright, well, that means that now Dave Ewart will not advance, so it's between Fratters, Breezy, and Fiend to try and advance to the next round. Breezy is in on an outlap right now, and Fiend is going to complete his lap. Is it the RS? Fiend jumps up second Breezy's fastest, 111.753. Oh. 
and right on the main straights, we'll have to get Breezy in as well. But Dave, go ahead and include your audio. What happened out there that took you out? Uh, I was just around turn seven and found myself at the wrong side of the track, touched the curb and just gone. Um, this, this track's so spinny. Alright, well, do you think you'll be able to recover from this and get back into the points in the race itself? Uh, yeah, well, if the race goes into like qualifying, I think we're going to see a lot of spins. We've already seen um, the last corner quite a lot of people spinning out, so I think we're going to see a bit of carnage in the first couple of laps. Alright, well, I do have to ask one more thing. What's your tyre plan going to be for the race? Oh my god, there's been another incident already! And that is Fiend who's had an incident now on the back straightaway. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. I think I'll go... Um, probably soft, medium, soft. I think there's going to be safety cars, so there'll be space for extra stops. Alright, well, I do want to say thanks for coming in and sharing your opinion with your experience in qualifying. We'll be looking forward to you trying to climb up through the field in the race itself. Thank you. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and try and get XRL Breezy I, into the party yeah. real quickly. I've invited him already, so. But... He might not be wanting to talk about this, but they crash well, as it stands minute. right. Yeah, well, as it stands right now, it is between Fratters and Flavor to advance to the next round. Pingu is in the middle of the lap, as is KL Bim. They're trying to improve just enough so that way a potential war between Fratters and Flavor doesn't end up kicking them out in the process. And Mr. Neon is on track doing the same thing as well. Neon really aggressive on the curbs there in Sector 2. But he's making it work for him thus far, at least. Gusty has retired from the session. He feels, rightly so, that there's no need to push harder. Neon already up by half a second. So Neon is in the position to jump ahead of Boothie and maybe even fight with Trey when it comes to single lap times. JL, Ben, and Pingu are the interesting ones to watch, as will be Flavor and Fratters. Because as it is right now, Flavors is in, Fratters is out. But it's well known the flavor's strength is not in qualifying, but in the race itself, Fratters could very well try. He's coming out, Fratters. He's coming out to the track right now, Fratters. Alright, well, there is the word. As we see the two hosses now on the run to the final corner, it will be Pingu followed by Dale Ben. How much will they improve on their times? Dale Ben aborts his lap altogether. And Pingu was actually down by two tenths, so no change from those two. Flavor is still in pit lane, but Fratters is out now. And this is going to be where it gets interesting. Fratters has soft tires equipped. Of note, for the Haas machines of Jailbin and Pingu, their best laps at this point are still on the softs, not the memes they currently have equipped, so... Fratter's coming to a very, very slow run. Right before you get to the final corner, he wants to be at full speed. He's into the dirt, but he keeps it straight. It's still good. It's still legal. He's still got all the tires on track. Now it is beginning. Fratters, will he be able to bump Flavor out of Q3? Pingu aborting his lap. So right now, Fratters has clean track. There's absolutely no one on circuit except for him right now. Now JL Bend is beginning to come back out onto the circuit. Still no movement from Flavor. I take it back. Flavor is now on the run onto the circuit. Flavor is not going to take this line down. But the focus right now is on Fratters, on soft tire compounds. What can he do? The time he has to beat is a 113.523. He clabbers over the curbs, but the car is still on circuit. It's still green. There is a lot of hesitancy in that McLaren. Mm. He see, I think he's backed out a little bit, if anything. Yeah, he's backed yeah, out. Yeah, he's backed out. So he's going he's to charge go the ERS back up. Yep. 
he needs to make this one count, otherwise he is pretty much his own key of key two. Hangu's done a risk, he's in ninth and he's retired in the pit. Galebind is out on circuit right now as well. Trying to see if he can improve on his time. Riding on board with Fratters right now. I'm seeing a lot of C sign on that wheel. Just does not have the confidence in making these corners, it would appear, in that McLaren. He's up by like three tanks, and it's not enough for him to go through on the first sector as it stands. Oh, that's a lock up in the rear tires. He's still on it though. Wait, he's lost a huge. He's probably lost a huge chunk of time, man. And he has to keep going. He's, he's up, up by 1.1 second. seconds. So Ooh. this could still work out for him. He guess he's to navigate these last two corners without issue. I think if he didn't lock up his rears, I think he would have gained a lot more time. Checker flag is out. It's just a one down to the line for Fridays. Oh, very clean at the final corner. Opens up the RS to the line. And he's through. He's in. 112.753. Now the focus on Flavor. Flavor is up. He's only up by 1.17 at the end of Sector 1. At the end of Sector 2, he's up by 4 tenths. So Flavor is going to try and knock Pingu out. KL Bend is also coming to the line, but he's not at risk of getting taken out. He's actually aborting his lap and coming right to the pits. Here comes Flavor. Can he knock the Haas of Pingu out and get himself his third appearance in Q3? Yeah. Yes! Third appearance in Q3 for X3 for Flavor. And that gamble from Pingu has not paid off. He will start 11th in the race. And the gap between Yalebind and Flavor's time at the end with only a difference of one thousandth of a second as well. Alright, so here's the lineup. Dave Ewart will not advance, obviously, after his accident. Breezy will not advance after he had an accident. Plastic Love will not advance. Plastic Love, I somehow has gipped the system into starting him 12th instead of 16th after serving a qualifying ban. It's absolutely hilarious to see that work out. Pingu gets knocked out in the last moments, and it's Flavor. Jailbin and Fratters are in. They'll be starting on Sauce. Boothie and Trey are in. They'll be starting on Mediums. Twitch Broys is in. He'll be starting on Sauce. And then Gussie, Neon, Fiend, and Chubby are in. They're going to be starting on Mediums. So, five soft tire drive... I mean... Not five, four drivers on softs and six drivers on mediums. That will be the top ten for the start of the race. And the gap of fa from fastest to slowest is 1.203 seconds. So for Fratters, Galebin, and Flavor, nothing against them. I don't see any way that they're going to seriously contend, contend for the pole position. I think what's in their favor is just get a good lap in fast on a set of softs. And don't burn any more soft tires. Save the rest of them for the race itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we're not advancing for some reason. I mean, we're way... I will say we are way ahead of schedule after ending Q1 early, so... We honestly could see this race start before the normal top of the hour. Oh, no, yep, now we're going. Alright, so ten drivers in the shootout for the pole position. I'm seeing movement at the back end of the pits right now. It looks like it's going to be the Red Bull of Gusty. Well, no, he's going to get beat out by the Alpine. That will be Fiend, who's going to be the first driver out onto the circuit. And all 
already, it looks like about half the field is already trying to get onto track right now. So yeah, right now, Flavor Boothie, Fratters, and Jailbin have not yet made an attempt to get onto the circuit. Trey is pulling off from the back because he doesn't want to be an issue. Shelby is going to sneak by Twitch Boys because he wants as much clean track as he can. But right now, I'm focused on Fiend. A reminder, when it comes down to it, Shelby is fighting Dusty and Fiend for points. Stone Shuffle having not shown up is a little bit of an outside threat in the long term and not a threat at all for today. So for Chubby, he needs to be ahead of Dusty and Fiend. Dusty is six points out. Fiend is about 38 points out right now. As Fiend now crosses the line to begin his lap. Chubby does not care at all. He got on circuit and he has just been flying on just this warm-up lap alone. He is trying to make this happen as quickly as he can. He knows he has that five-second grid penalty, so he's really just fighting to try and get sixth or better. For drivers like Flavor or Fratters, I think it's... Oh, and that's Flavor's head an instant farther up. But this is actually nice. So they might end up being ahead of Chubby at the race start simply because of the grid penalties that Chubby is going to suffer in the race itself. Right now, there's only two cars still on the pits. That's Fratters and Jailbend. Zero for Shelby at the end of Sector 2. Fiend to the top with a 111.195. Now here comes Gusty to the line. He will set a lap. No, Gusty has booted his lap time. So it will be Shelby who will be the second driver to set a time in the session. It will be a time of 111.431. Now here comes Booth Twitch Boys with 112.757. Mr. Neon with 111.463. Flavor is now beginning his lap, and Trey will be the fifth driver to set a time. Coming out of the final corner. On 20.568, so he can go significantly faster, I imagine. Boothy, I'm guessing, has aborted on this lap because he's slowed way down there in sector two's back straightaway. He's now readying up for a run here in Sector 3. Fratters is on an out lap right now, and Flavor is in a proper flying lap. Here comes Boothy to the line. Not going to be a competitive lap here. It's only going to be like 124, 123.007. And he'll be on track just ahead of Gusty. But this will be Boothy's actual competitive lap, I imagine. Meanwhile, here comes... Oh, and Boothie's around and hard into the outside wall at that bank tear pit. Flavor jumps up to fifth with a 113.517 now. Fratters is in the middle of the lap. The McLaren seems to have been struggling significantly, but he's been able to make this thing work. He's dragged it all the way up into Q3. Very fun at going over the curb in corner two, but he's still on it. The muscle by Flavor as Flavor is pulled over on his cooldown lap. It's clean track ahead for Fratters. Straight away, the DRS pops open. Clabbers over the corners. 
He's burned up almost all of his ERS, so he has gone absolutely mental on this lap. Bracket, you can guess he's straight coming out of the final corner at the line. Fratto will set a lap time of 112.541. That's the sixth fastest thus far. Gail Bend is still in the pits. Gusty is in the middle of a lap right now. And both Flavor and Trey have come into the pits at the moment. Shelby is on an outlap. He wants to try and go faster. As it stands right now, third fastest time would mean that he would start eighth. He needs to try and get pulled. He would be able to steal the pull away from a driver like Fiend and would be able to start the best of sixth. At best, a sixth place position. Oh, and oh. Dusty's around! Immediately out of the way, though, for Boofy. What? Uh, yeah, Boofy. Yeah. seen several different spins there, but Gussie got extremely fortunate and did not destroy the car in the process. He's now going to bring it into the pits. We'll probably put on a new set of tires. There's still a little bit over five minutes in the session, so the time's not terribly desperate yet for him. He'll be out on circuit now. He cannot afford a crash. A crash in this session would drop him almost to the very back of the field. Right now he has the third fastest time. Up ahead of him is Boothie, who has had three prior laps to try and set a lap, and none of them have worked out very well. Boothie, despite being an extremely good qualifier under normal circumstances, has been struggling significantly here today. All right, here comes the Ferrari to the line. Into the final two corners. Boothie aborts his attempt, so it's clean track ahead for the Ferrari. He's down on time by just 16 thousandths. Mr. Neon and Twitch Boys are on outlap, and Galvin has finally come onto the circuit. Gusty is now beginning to get back onto the track as well. Ooh, Galvin really sideways coming out of the banked hairpin. Boys to begin his lap now. And Chubby Oh, and Gail Bend had a spin. Gail Bend has had a spin coming to Twitch Boris as well. Twitch. He's had one as well at turn one. I think it's just catching too much curb and then putting the power down too early. At turn one, there's probably a week's reason. That would appear to be the issue. Gusty has now crossed the line, so this will be his third attempt at setting a lap here. Who can anyone get? Can anyone get Fiend's lap time and put themselves on pole? I think Trey might be able to, and maybe Gusty as well. The track's gotten extremely busy all of a sudden here. Just. Yeah, Flavor and Chubby are uh, spark is the only one, only one to the pit lane. Flavor has just come back onto the circuit now, as you said that. Mm, cool, yeah. Just Gusty on there. Gusty is very yeah. fortunate. There's nine cars on track, but it's relatively clean in front and behind him. So as long as Gusty doesn't spin in these final corners like he did last time, he should be good to get oh. this lap in. All the drivers now are going to be on the track because Chubby, uh, Chubby's just went out on track. 
obviously ran the final quarter up with like DRS and his first lap time, 111.526, puts him fifth. All right, Gale Ben finally sets the time, but it's not a competitive one at all. 119.244. He was compromised significantly. Oh, and Trey's had an instant. Trey has had a spin in the middle of his lap. He's back underway now, but with only a minute left in the session, Trey is going to be in a difficult scenario. Now, Fratters has pulled over. He's trying to charge he everything up down. for one final run. Yeah, he was down in his time, so he just backed off, reset, and go again. Fiend, dear, he can't. Fiend, he's not improving. So he's going again. I think you made a mistake about that. Ooh. Everyone except Chubby is in the middle of a lap right now. Boofy's just gone up to fifth. One, 11, one minute 11. Fratters is two. Oh my god, Boofy almost hit him. Boofy almost hit him. That was very close. Come on. Oh no, and there goes Trey! And he's around! And that's it! His shot at the pole is over! Chubby's just begun his lap. Fiend is up on his time, but only just. Oh no, and there goes. That, is that Boothie? Yes, that's Boothie. He's Gussie's just had an accident there. And Gussie's out. No, Gussie's retired in the pits. Never mind. Trey has yet to move on after his spin earlier. Fiend's gone. Fiend went round. He's invalidated as well. But no one else is in a position to beat Fiend in lap time. It would appear, I think Fiend is still going to walk out of this with the pole position. Trey has just had another spin on the circuit. Also, time's up. Over. Plow. There are no Flavor. more chances. The lap you're on now is it. Flavor across the line. He goes at ninth. Beats Jail Ben. Fiend, another spin. Fiend has just had another spin in the final corner. And that is Twitch Boys, who's coming up on at speed to that corner. Boothies cut. Boothies went off. Line. Boofy went off of the hair of the uh sector three corner. Twitch boys is what out of fuel. Chubby Ayat Spark is crossing the line. He goes on pole. He took it! He gets the point for pole position, but he will and he will start six, which will be the best he can start for Fiend. He'll still get that front row start at least. Trey is looks like he's still gonna get second unless J Elbind or Fratters can pull something nah, crazy that, out here. Uh, J Elbind is run out of fuel. He's just trundling along. And Fratters spun multiple times on his, uh, his prior lap. And Trey has already had two spins on this lap as well, which has invalidated it. So that's it. The grid order you see now is what you have for the start of the race. With the exception that Shelby Spark will be serving a five-spot grid penalty and will get knocked back to a sixth-place starting spot. But he denied pull from Fiend, so he will get the points for that. It took him a while. I think he turned. I think Chubby turned more laps out there than anyone else, and every single one, it was balls to the wall. And at the end, he made it work. And now we'll see what the race has to offer. If it was, if it is this chaotic and qualifying, surely it'll be that like the same in the race. Yep. Well, here's the lineup. At the end, it's Chubby who gets pulled, but he'll be starting six, and it will be. Fiend, Trey, Mr. Neon, Twitch Bros, Boothy, Gusty, Fratters, Flavor, and Jailbend. That will be the top 10 for the race. We're anticipating roughly a five minute break until we get into the race itself. And like I said earlier, uh, we may be in a position where we start this race a little bit before the top of the hour. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah. All right, here we are, 12 minute clock, well, 12 second clock, I mean, and then it will be the period of time where we end up finding out who is going to be starting on what tires. I do want to say this, although we had several spins, we didn't actually have any DNFs in qualifying, in session three at least, so that's nice yeah. to see.
real quickly as we bring up the race director so you can see. So the big thing is, of the top seven, six of them will be starting on medium tires. Twitch Bros is in an interesting position, starting fourth on softs. So then Fratter's Flavor and Galebin, they're all starting on the softs right now. As it stands, everyone outside of the top ten is on softs except for Collie Boy, who is on mediums. All right, well, here we are. Collie Boy has elected to swap over to medium tires to start the race with. Oh, we do go on the hour. Yeah, yeah it looks like they still want us to go on the hour regardless. So it'll be roughly a four-minute wait until we get onto the circuit. Yeah. So right now, we're just standing by a very crash-filled qualifying session one led to a not-so-badly but still crash-filled session two, and then a lot of chaos and randomness, it seemed, from session three, but everyone was at least able to set laps and complete session three. Sixteen drivers will be taking the green flag in today's race. Honestly, was anticipating a slightly larger field, but I'm guessing a lot of people were just like, yeah, Zan for absolutely not, and elected not to show up. Of note, one of our championship contenders has also decided not to show up as well. So this race could have a massive knock-on effect in how the title plays out. Because it's been a four-driver fight up to this point. Now it looks like it might trickle down to a three-driver fight depending on how it goes. Yeah. All right, so we should be underway in about uh, about 90 seconds or so. Real quickly from the uh, Discord, Boothy, who's qualified fifth, he has gone ahead and said that, quote, I hate this track. It's weirdly slippy for no reason. And that seems to be a recurring thing. We've seen a lot of drivers dealing with the cars just sliding out and spinning from underneath them. Hmm. Oh, okay. We've also seen to have a lot of people, primarily in the McLaren, team but other drivers as well having trouble just keeping the car straight on the circuit i think we may see the first half of this race get extremely chaotic with spins and crashes and then the latter half i think the entire grid will just be totally spread out we may not even have any yellows late in the race because of how spread out the field will be we should be underway here in a little bit less than a minute To everyone who is watching the broadcast, I just want to say thank you very much for electing to jump in and watch the XRL X3 race in Zandvoort. Although the top tier series, X1, is currently going on, on the other channel, I personally have always preferred the racing in X3 over X1. There's a lot more uh, chaos inside of it that makes it interesting. As long as the chaos doesn't go straight into only five drivers finishing a race, I'm always yeah. going to prefer chaos. <laughs>
Mm. Oh, we're going. There, that won't happen again. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what was going on. Quickly, final look, and it looks like the only drivers outside of the top 10 who will be starting on mediums will be Plastic Love and Collie Boy, and no one is electing to start the race on hard tire compound. But again, with all these safety cars, I kind of think that starting on hards isn't going to be a great idea. Maybe finishing the race on hards could be a good option, though. Yeah. As we pull onto the circuit, per usual, I'll be focusing on the front as we have four lights, five lights, and it's lights out. Away we go here at Zandvoort, and the drive is on by SRL Fiend, easily going to pull away from Trey. Neon is looking to the outside of the Mercedes. Already the Ferrari has moved uh, up to fifth, and there's a stack up. Yep. But everyone's going fine, although Trey has gone around from the top spot all the way to dead last. Trey has fallen to last place. They're three wide for a last position at the back of the grid. Now Manta and Meerkat has to back way out of it as the Alpha Romeo's of Coley Boy and Davey are, are finally tracking with the field on the back end of this long snake that's going up to the grid. There's four wide, five wide. That's Franters, that's Plastic Love who is out. Now Franters is clambering over the corners. Plastic Love totally off circuit. Look at Yale, but on the inside of Breezy, trying to get by. Now Frater's gonna try and cap the line, but there's a little bit of oversteer. Yale Ben trying to make it work on the outside of Neon. They're neck and neck as they're coming out to the back straightaway. Neon is pitching Yale Ben. Yale Ben doesn't care. It's a drag race going down the back straightaway. Again. And Yale Ben gets by Mr. Neon. And Shelby Spark has gone up to fifth. Cousin Dusty is right behind Boothy, who has jumped from fifth to third at race start. And Fiend has walked off with a 1.7 second lead at the front. Oh, oh no, and there's a big accident! A huge accident in the back of the field! Three, four, five cars involved! I think Meerkat and Breezy are the ones though that have they've suffered and they are out of the race. And that all started with Jay Elbin had an accident coming out of the final quarter and there was absolutely nowhere for anyone behind to go. Breezy, Mantic, Meerkat, both out of the race with massive accidents. So we're gonna try real quickly and get Mantic, Meerkat, and Breezy to the race. But here's one bad news though. Shelby Spark was involved in the accident. Now the good news is he was able to immediately come in and they've thrown hard tires on that Ferrari. But still a very, very messy scenario for your points leader. But we're going to try and get Mantic, Meerkat, and Breezy into the party right now. Mm-hmm. Mr. Neon now up to 10th tray in 11th now. JL Ben just has a penalty for a collision with Collie Boy, despite the fact that those two aren't even close to each other on the track right now. That's interesting. Of the leaders, it looks like I don't know if anyone's actually going to like to come in in the top eight right now. We're just barely into this session. Plastic Love, yeah. drive through penalty for speeding under the safety car, which sounds bullcrap, frankly, because his entire purpose is to catch up to the back of the grid. Coming into the party right now is Mantic Meerkat. Meerkat. Well, I'm going to be honest, I did not want to talk to you again today. I wanted to see you make something happen, but go ahead and elaborate what happened in that one lap you had on track. It's honestly a rough weekend whenever the AI can outperform you, although this scenario, obviously, you didn't even really get a chance. It looked like you had a halfway decent start, though, off the line. Oh no, Plastic Glove, hard impact! Under the safety car, Plastic Glove with a massive crash! And he is out! Christ alive! And like that, we're down to 13 cars.
Well, it's a shame. Do you think he can rebound next week at Monza? Shame to see you out so early. We're now going to go ahead and try and get Plastic Love in here to hear what happened from his perspective. Under safety car, big accident. I don't know if he's going to do it. He normally doesn't do it. He may not have a mic, I think. But this means that Pengu, once Pengu Flavor Color Boy can. Oh, there we are. Coming into the party right now is Plastic Love. Plastic, if you have a mic, go ahead and include your audio. Big accident hey, under the safety car. What happened? Dude, I, I don't know. You saw me. You were, you were watching me. I, I was taking that curve nicely, and then I just lost it. I, I don't know what happened. I'm absolutely fuming because I didn't even do anything incorrect, and it's just lost. All right, out of curiosity, what was your view of that big first lap accident coming out of the final corner? <sighs> um, Honestly, I didn't see much, you know? I, I think... I, I was just in the back. I, I not much really. I had a broken wing. I had to take corner slow, so I kind of lost a bit. All right. Well, it's a shame to see you out after that qualifying ban. Do you think you can rebound next week at Monza? <laughs> I, I sure hope so, because this season has been absolutely awful for me. It's it's right. not looking too good. All right. Well, we're coming to the green flag. I will let you go. Thanks for jumping in and sharing what happened from your perspective. Yeah, no problem. Alright, it was Wonder Green. Twitch Boys was not able to get a launch on Fiend. Boothie pulled alongside his teammate but couldn't make anything happen. Chubby is by Fratters already, though. So your points leader trying to make ground up once again. He is ahead of several drivers, but his two rivals in the title right now are ahead of him on track. Gussie and Boothie side by side. And Gussie's around Ooh. and right in front of the points leader. And Gussie spins. And there's an accident. Oh, a massive accident. Trey, Trey Jailbin with a big Boothie, Boothie has damage as well. We didn't even complete a third of the lap there. Boothie is still off circuit with damage front wing as well. Now we're down to 11 cars, and we've not even completed a full racing lap yet. Boothie trying to go side by side with Dusty for the fourth position on a section of the track you're not supposed to go side by side in, and we saw what happened there. Uh, and just the yellow flag, but it is low sa safety car, so both people need to right, allow another one later on. Coming to the party right now is Galvin. Galvin, go ahead and include your audio. Massive accent there. What in the world? And Pingu's out now. We're already down to only 10 cars in five laps. Pingu's just had a big accident, and there's your full course safety car. Uh, Galvin, go ahead and include your audio. What happened out there? Well, first, we all started the reason the whole safety car came out I was racing with Chubby coming out of the last corner and the car just got loose brought out the safety car so I'm like okay turn no terminal damage let's go in for the hards we're gonna go to the end and then I don't know what happened with the Mercedes but the Merc got really squirrely I went into the back of them and I barely touched the wall and my tire came off <laughs> it was just dumb luck yeah you can say that again especially considering that all of a sudden Literally, in the, flip, in the amount of time it would take to chug a beer, we go from having two hosses in the points to neither hoss remaining in the race. Yep. Uh, not how I was looking forward to my comeback to X3, that's for sure. Alright. Well, it's an absolute travesty. Do you think you can rebound next week at Monza? I'm definitely hoping so. Monza, I'm very strong at Monza. I have pretty good pace there. And uh, hoping for some good points next week, you know. That's a very reasonable assumption to make. Hopefully it turns around for you, mate. All right, appreciate you guys for having me. Mm -hmm. Farewell. Now we're going to try and see if we can get Trey or Pingu in. I don't think it's going to work, but... No. Well, I've already tried them, so... Yeah, okay. I kind yeah. of assume that, so that's why I said it probably is not going to work. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, the sad thing is, in the span of seven laps... We are down to 10 cars. Everyone's getting points. Well, if they survive. I don't, I don't know if everyone's going to 
to survive. And because here's the thing, all the accidents we've seen, well, most of the accidents we've seen thus far and the DNFs that have happened have been due to drivers crashing due to just kind of being stupid. No, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I didn't see who got alongside who or what the circumstance was. But Boothy and Gussy were side by side for a long period of time in a high speed narrow section of the track. It was, and one of those two were bound to go off circuit. It ended up being both of them, which caused a massive stack up, but one of them were bound to go off circuit. Right now, we're just waiting to see how long it will take for Fratters and Boothie to catch up to the back of the grid. Fratters is only about six seconds off from Gussie. Boothie, 24th. For Gussie, positives and negatives. Because for Gussie, he was involved in that big accident, but he's able to continue. And with only 10 cars left, he now has points. But he's now behind Chubby. And Gussie is closer to Chubby than Fiend is. So this could have been a race that he could have walked out with the points lead at. And while there's still 20, more than 25 laps left in the event, a lot of things could happen. At this point, I wouldn't feel very confident in Gusty closing the gap on Chubby. For uh, Fratters, I, right now, I know we're extremely early in the race, but I think Fratters could get driver of the day, considering that he seems to be struggling like mad with that McLaren. Every single time I look at him, it looks like he's backing out of the corners and able to make it stick. He's still alive, and he's going to walk out of here with points if he can survive to the end. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. Just, ugh, it, it's a nutty race, to say at least. And Boothy, I... I'm gonna say this about Boothie. I oh I make I make it very clear. Boothie is a very, very good qualifier. And there are some races that he shows up and everything's firing on all cylinders and he is legit like one of the best drivers in the next three. But we've seen this before from Boothie. The big one that stood out to me where is where he directly led to that massive multi-car accident at Red Bull Rain in Austria a few weeks back, trying to go on the outside where there was no track and basically causing the five-car stack up there. Now here's another one here at Zandvoort. There is another one similar to that in XRRL a few weeks back as well. I know Boothie is great by himself when it's just him on the track, but his... It seems like his ability and his decision making, racing with other people on the racetrack, has regressed significantly over the last few weeks. I, that's a very harsh thing to say, but I do think that needs to be said at this point. Safety car is going to come in this lap. Yep, and we'll see how long we can last with racing with green flag running. It's going to be it. Flavors and sick as well, that'll be the kind for. He's the only one with a penalty, and that is a five second penalty, so you'll get that removed in his next pit stop. And Flavor got that penalty in the middle of that massive lap one accident, so I imagine if he, even if he doesn't get it removed in the stop, he will get it removed post race. So, either way, I think that penalty will go away. Alright, coming to the green flag. Can Twitch Boys do anything to Fiend World? Dave Ewart spring for second. Uh, Fiend backs up the field like something crazy. There's three wide coming to the line. That's not exactly oh, the smartest thing to do. Contact, oh, Dave, contact with Twitch Boys, and now Dave gets spat out wide. Gone. Here comes Mr. Neon. He's been off circuit. He got forced off. Chubby right behind Mr. Neon. Neon getting really racing with Dave. Don't want to be going side by side this part of the track, boys. You're not going to do it yet, but Neon seems to be significantly faster than Dave at the moment. Twitch Boys does not seem to have what it takes to keep pace with Fiend either. Coming onto the back straightaway now. Neon dives to the inside of Dave, has a straighter exit, but Dave carries a little bit more speed. Neck and neck for the position. Color Boy gets by Fratters for ninth now. Contact between Neon and Dave. That's going to damage Neon's front wing. And now Chubby is on the outside of Neon. He's going to pull out of it. Doesn't want to be side by side in the corners. Your points are being very cautious right now. But that's holding him up behind Neon. Now Flavor is going to have a chance to maybe make a move on Chubby down the straight. But, yeah, there goes Mr. Neon in the pits. Flavor misses the braking zone in the draft and goes way off circuit. We'll lose a spot to Gus, to lose a spot to Boothie and Gusty.
Right, Furless comes into the pits as well, changes front wing, on goes a pair of soft compound tires. And now Gusty, who is second in points, has found your points leader, Shelby, on track, but Boothy is there in six. Boothy and Gusty, when they were side by side earlier, caused an accident. Now Boothy's trying to do the same thing to Gusty again. He's putting a lot of pressure on the Red Bull, dives to the inside. He's making it sick for the moment, side by side on the back straightaway now. Now it looks like Gussie will hold on to the spot for the moment. As Chubby has closed in on Dave Ewart in third. Chubby down low, Dave up in the wall very nearly. They're side by side for a third position. Chubby gets himself back into the podium spots now. Luffy right there behind Gusty. Dave does not have the pace with his drivers around him right now. And Gusty and Boothy are both putting significant pressure on him. Reminder, Dave started on soft tires and those tires will be falling off at this point. Yeah. DRS yet at this point in the race. Oh, wow, three wide out of nowhere. Both Dave and Boothy made a lunge. Of Dave. Okay, wow, so they were three wide for a second. Gussie capitalized on Boothy. It's taking him a little bit longer, but he's finally going to get by Dave as well. He's trying to use DRS, but yeah, with, the oh, Jesus Christ, Boothy very nearly clobbered in the back of Gusty again. And now Dave, in about a lap, goes from third down to sixth. And now it's Flavor who's going to start putting pressure on the Alfa Romeo. Here comes the Alfa into the pits. The tires are just no longer beneficial to him in any way. Boothy right there behind Gusty. Last time these two fought side by side. Well, they were three wide, but the time That's before that, change. it led to an accident. Dave oh, was oh yeah, because thing. Dave, oh yeah, because Dave had an instant where he hit Twitch Boys. I forgot that he had an instant where he hit Twitch Boys trying to make a move, and it must have damaged the front wing. Oh no, your points leader, Chubby Smart. He's back on the way now, but there's no front wing, and this brings out a full course safety car as your points leader has had an accident in sector two. No. And he was rebounding well. He had gotten himself up into the third position, but it spin out and crashed all on his own. He should be thanking his lucky stars right now, and it did not take him out of the race. As the pace car is out on track, now we're going to see who's going to pit, who's going to not. I imagine we'll see the top three pit for sure. Yeah, here comes Fiend into the pit lane. Twitch Boys, he's going to come into the pits as well. Gussie will probably pit as well. Here comes Boothy. Boothy is going to stay out and will inherit the race lead. Flavor is going to stay out and inherit second. Collie Boy is going to stay out. Consider so he will inherit fourth, I think, because he's not going to be able to get ahead of Twitch Boys. He'll be fifth. Gussie is going to be sixth. Chubby obviously has to pit because he has that front wing to change. Mr. Neon is pitting. They had just put sauce on that car as well. So I imagine they're probably going to put on hards. He has hards, and he'll be running those tires to the end. Dave Ewart is going to stay out. And Fratters is going to come in. This might be on very fresh sauce. He's going to come in as well. It's going to be a while until the entire field is properly gathered up. And Fratters is playing on hards as well to last to the end of the race. So, uh, Fiend is second, but Boothy is now your race leader. And Boothy has soft-worn, soft-tire compounds while everyone behind him is on hards or mediums that I anticipate most of them will try and run to the end of the race. safety car. 
Luckily, the third one is not was not being caused due uh, someone crashed out. We we still this got all pink cars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shelby really played it aggressive there. Shelby's been very very cautious this entire race. Right? He's not been making like any high risk moves. Every move and every overtake he's done on track has been very calculated. But it looks like the track just re reached out and grabbed him. But he is able to continue, at least. Now, the question right now is just how long will it take for Fratters to catch the back of the grid? Right now, he is just now entering the final corner as well. The field is currently going through the banked hairpin. So, yeah, Fratters is still about a third of a lap back. Shelby now also is in a position again where he is behind his two rivals in the championship. So that's not helping him whatsoever. But frankly, if Shelby can just survive to the end of the race, even with 10 cars, I think that would be a championship defining move. Just being able to survive in this crazy race after that incident he had earlier would be impressive. All right, here we are. Fratters is only about seven seconds out from the back of the grid. So he should be going green on lap 15. Not quite halfway through this race. Yeah. Alright, coming to the green flag now. Fiend has been on the front on the last restarts, but now it's Boothie with Fiend right behind him. Fiend likes to back, gather up and bunch up the entire field. What will he do to try and get by Boothie though? Fiend is on fresh hards, Boothie is on worn softs. Boothie gets a good run, and your leader, your leader spins and comes right up. A massive exit, two, three cars. There's not gonna be room. Oh. And flavor and Boothie, now in a big way, and flavor in the exact same way that his day ended in Dev yesterday, sees his race in in a heartbeat, and Fiend retakes the lead. That's not a full car safety car, interestingly enough, despite the fact that Boothie's car pirouetted about five feet into the air, we're still in the green flag. Yeah. They never done to eight as well. Oh, oh Dave, Dave. John. he's around now! He's out! Oh, Chubby spun. He just made contact with Mr. Neon. Oh no, and now Frater spins! Well, Frater was able to get away with that without too much of an issue. Yeah. And there's your full course safety car. For Dave's instant. And now we go from 10 to 7 cars. What in the devil? Well. I said I not want to speak about the race. Uh, oh, there's so much wing on the, the main straight. Jobby Ajax Spark is coming into the pit lane. Uh, just to put on a set of worn hards. Everyone is on hards at this point. Yeah. Well, Shelby is on worn hards compared to everyone else. I think in Shelby's scenario, the strategy for him... Actually, Shelby put on the same set of hards that he had his prior spin and accident with. Interesting enough. I think in Shelby's case, I think his idea now is to just survive and at the very end come in, throw on sauce and try and get a uh, fast slap point. Because if you can complete 90% of the race, you'll still be credited with getting points. So if he comes in, throws on soft tires at the very end and crashes out, he'll still at least get 7th place points. Because here's the interesting thing. Your three championship contenders who started this race, Fiend, Gusty, and Shelby, are all still running at this point. Um, I'm trying to remember how the FIA... 
awards points. It's 25, 18, 15, 12, 10, right? 25, 18, 15, 12, 10, 8, 6. I think Shelby can walk out here with at least 6 points, assuming that he completes 9% of the race, right? So, if that, with that mind, he doesn't even have to race anyone, he's going to lose the points lead, more than likely to Gusty, unless Gusty ends up in another accident. But, uh... Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I think Chubby could still... Oh, coming into the party right now is Boothy! Alright, Boothy, go ahead and include your audio. Um, a very chaotic day. I want to ask, you were coming to the green flag, what happened in that big accident? No clue. I had lovely warm tires, but my foot was down and it was threw me into the wall. <sighs> Alright, well I do have to ask about a different scenario. Early in the race, you pulled up alongside the Red Bull of Gusty, coming out of Turn 3, and the two of you ended up wrecking and caused a massive stack up. What was going on there? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I couldn't really see Gusty. I knew he was beside to be somewhere, but I couldn't exactly see where. And then all of a sudden, all spinning round and going across the gravel trap. We we'll have to have a look at that one in the videos. Up. All right. Well, big accident. There are only seven cars left on the circuit at this point. Uh, shame to see you taken out. Yeah, uh, maybe I went too high range. No idea what the hell happened to me all. Well, it did the same in qualifying because it just went, nope, you're not coming around the corner. Enjoy the barrier. <laughs> as long as Fradders don't get a podium, we're fine. We can live with that. Alright, well, we're coming to the green flag now with Gusty and Twitch Boys trying to make a move on Fiend. As the green flag is out, Twitch Boys cannot do anything to Fiend. If anything, Gusty is going to look on the outside of the Aston Martin going into turn one. He's still on the outside, but he's going to lose that position in the short term. Can't seem to make it work. Neon is right there, ready to capitalize if one of these drivers ahead makes a mistake. But nothing seems to happen for the moment. Chubby Alex, but just hanging back for the moment. Cowboy just chasing down Fathers for P4. Chubby is on all the hards, so I think it just needs to be cautious because there is there's more likely that a few and maybe a few other drivers that might crash out in, from now to the end of the race. At this point, it's just a matter of survival. Anyone who can make it to the end of this race is going to have what could be considered a good point stay, even if you're dead last. Oh, he's, on oh. track. he's got a good run on Collie Boy. He's gonna, he, looked at, he looked down the inside, but uh, thought better of it and backed off. Yell flag and another safety car. But what for? I'm just. Um, I don't know. Mr. Neon is going to take advantage of this to dive into the pits, so that'll drop him to the back of the grid. But we'll see with yeah, this pit. I... We'll see with this pit stop if it is, if it's a wing change. He was involved in an accident. No, it's not a wing change. So it's a very confusing safety car. He's throwing on mediums, and those mediums should be able to last him to the end of this race. It'll be a little bit tight, but they should be able to. 17 laps. It should be a very short safety car as well. Mm -hmm. Neon is still relatively close to the back of the grid. But, um, yeah. Gusty, as it stands right now, is poised to walk out of this race with the points lead. And Fiend will close massively on Shelby as well for the title. So. Yep. Getting very close. This will be heading to Monza next week.
I guess we're not gonna go green this lap. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a seven car field and we gathered up real quickly, but for whatever reason we're staying in the lap under yellow. And this is what, our fourth full course safety car? Yeah, I think it's the fourth or the fifth one we've had, so it's just been one of those days. We honestly, considering how much of this race is left, even though we don't have a lot of drivers left on track, we could tie the max number of yellow flags in a race, full course safety car yellow flags in a race, that would be five, like what we had at Catalonia. Yeah. I'm going to try one more time to get flavor in here. Uh, so for whatever reason, oh, Fratter's just got a penalty for a collision with Mr. Neon. No, nah, I think Neon went to the back and he's just went past only four. He's just, wait, he's just going by everyone. He was last, he, he's just gone by, he's just gone by every driver. I don't. Is he upset and trying to express displeasure with another driver? Because if so, this is the wrong way to do it. Yeah. He's just gained two places under safety car conditions, and that's apparently in itself. Sorry, what? Hello? Yes. Yes, and he's ran into Fratters twice as well. I... I can't even do anything about it because we're coming to the green flag. I'm going to leave this party real quickly, so sorry. Alright, coming to the green flag! Fiend bunches up the field once again. Twitch Boys still can't do anything to him, and Gusty can't do anything to Twitch Boys either. Fratters looking to the outside of Gusty as Mr. Neon and Collie Boy are side by side for a fifth and sixth positions. They're briefly three wide. Collie Boy might lose a position at Chubby, but Chubby backs out of it. Fratters gets by Mr. Neon. and Neon are having a very, very intense fight right now. Going down to it. Collie Boy backs out. He does not want a part of this. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Shelby invited me to a party because he wanted to know if I had seen what had just happened. And I verified that, yes, I had seen. So. Yeah. But uh, as it stands right now, Mr. Neon fighting very spiritedly with Fratters. I think Neon might be upset with something that Fratters may have done earlier because he's had several attempts to get by him, but he's not really capitalized on them. He's just racing them very aggressively. Ooh, Collie Boy with a twitch back there. The top three have all spread out a bit. Neon still there behind Fratters with Collie Boy and Chubby Spark rounding out the back of the grid.
DRS should come on on the next lap. There we are. DRS will be enabled in the following lap. Callaway Boy makes a dive on Fratters and ends up damaging his front wing in the process. Fratter, uh, Callaway Boy goes off onto the circuit. That promotes Kelby up at the six now. Kelby is right there behind Fratters. Fratters definitely off pace, still struggling with the McLaren, but Kelby doesn't want to try and muscle by him. Kelby is doing nothing but very low risk moves today. Oh, Fratters way off circuit! Twitch Boys out of second. Twitch Boys is head next and then it drops him out of second all the way down to sixth. He's still on track though. He is still going. But this promotes Neon up in the third, Dusty up in the second, and Fiend continues to hold a very strong lead at this point. because he's trying to invite me into a party, so I know he wants to talk, but it's just not working for whatever reason, it seems. Yeah, yeah at this point, yeah. it's all just a matter of survival. Who can make it to the end of the race or not? All right, finally, coming into the party is XRL Flavor. Flavor, go ahead and include your audio. I'm sorry it took so long to get you in here. Just like what we saw in the same part of the track as the dev race. Big yeah. accident. What happened? Well, it's, this track has been so unlucky for me all week, to be honest. Um, I was going really well, sitting in third place, thinking, um, yeah, I've got a good position here. Um, got rid of the penalties, knew they'd get, I'd get them back from the first incident. So I um, was feeling really good come around the last bend and uh, Boothy had binned it and span across the track and I just couldn't get out of the way and that was it. Um, massive crash. Um, I'm so fortunate I'd had a neck brace on because otherwise I'd be in hospital with um, whiplash. But yeah. Um, <laughs> mystical Hans device. All right, I do have one other question to ask. Hmm. What did you see in that massive first lap accident as Collie Boys just had an accident? But uh, what did you see in that massive first lap accident, Flavor? For me, um, I'll just go on the clip actually and, and, and show, read it and go through it because for me there's nothing I could do and I avoided two cars and then I went to avoid the third and I think I just pulled it slightly too much, too quick and I spam, uh, it, it the car and spam, I'll just go through it now quickly but yeah, um, it was a big one but look, I, I couldn't, to be honest, I couldn't believe that I was still going um, if I'm honest, I really couldn't. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm overtaking cars and going past cars. And then it comes to the right hand bend where the, where the track raises. Same place all week it's been, to be honest, on the same part of the track. Oof, I mean, I missed three cars. And I think I go to turn and hit the other car, and that just spins me around. So fortunate. I'll put both clips in the uh, main chat actually after the race. 
But yeah, yeah. massive, massive crashes. Yeah, you were on the way to mm. obviously points, but frankly, it looked like you could have maybe even sneaked out like a seven, six or seven place finish out of that until that big accident happened. Maybe so, a podium. Absolute yeah. travesty. Yeah, po honestly, absolutely. with how destructive yeah, yeah. this race has been, a podium is honestly in the cards for anyone still in the race at this point. So. Mm. Absolutely, but good luck to the boys that are left. And uh, yeah, it's been a bad week for me, so hopefully next week uh, offers uh, offers a bit more luck for me. I'm honest. That's beautiful, baby. So my wife just showed me a lovely crumble she's made. Beautiful. All right, well, have a good day. And thank you. Your luck turns around at yeah. Monza next week. Absolutely. Thank you very much, boys. And uh, awesome commentary as usual. Um, keep it up. Mm -hmm. Nice one. Thank you. We try. Anyways, we turn our focus back onto the circuit. An interesting scenario has developed. I don't know how long it's going to stay, but Shubby, despite being on very more hards, is actually closing on his championship rival, Gusty, and might be able to steal third from him if he keeps up this slow pace. Well, this steady pace, I should say. Looking at penalties right now, Neon has 10 seconds of penalties and Fratters has 5 seconds. That would change Fratters' position, but Neon would get dropped out of the podium down to 4th in that scenario. And that's assuming even that Chubby or Gussie doesn't end up catching it. Neon was on a charge up to Fiend earlier, but has kind of tapered off in pace. He's staying steady about 3 and a third to 3 and a half seconds behind your pole sitter and race leader Fiend at the moment. So for Chubby, right now he is 4th. And on pace, he is closing in on Gusty. I'll go ahead and say it. Everything that Chubby's been doing today has been very low-risk moves. I think he's trying to do a medium-risk move on Gusty, though. Just because Gusty is your closer rival in the championship fight, you don't want to let him get any extra points if you can help it. The gap between them in the point standings is 6.7 if you want to count point for pull. But 6 points going into this race. Neither of these two have penalties at the moment. I think if Chubby can get ahead of Gusty, it would help him significantly in the points. Fiend's going to close in on your points leader. There is no way around that. No one has what it takes to match Fiend in pace except maybe Chubby. But the gap between first and fourth is so big that doesn't matter. Yeah. I think as well, like, Chubby gets caught up in a lot of incidents as well, like, in qualifying and in the race, which really, like... Makes him having to work hard, to race harder, work harder to get a good result and get like to the position where he is. Yeah. Fiend has had a struggle, like especially last week in Belgium. He is that was a struggling race for him, but I can't really remember any other like here, four races. Yeah, like, races where he's like really struggled that much in a race. I think, I think with uh, the Mercedes, not the or Mercedes competitor, Stone Shuffle not having shown up, I think this has definitely turned this race into a three-man battle for a championship. Oh, Gusty with a huge twitch! Oh. And there we are, Chubby is by. Well, that was a little bit nutty. I honestly thought for a second there we were going to see that Red Bull go all the way around, but actually Gusty is still behind Chubby, so he could use DRS to potentially fight back for third. Chubby has been involved in three accidents, including that massive first lap big one. And he's on very worn tires. But with six laps to go, he's still running solidly in third. If he was to pit and throw on softs, though, I think he'd fall to fifth. He, yeah, he'd fall to fifth. He probably might be behind Friars, but he'd be able to get back by Friars because Friars has time penalties against. Well, Friars' time penalties will probably be removed because that time penalty came from Neon barging into him under the safety car. So I think right now for Shelby, it might just be a better option to not bother coming in to try and get fast slap and to just stay out right now. Because as it stands right now, he's 4.4 seconds out from Mr. Neon. Neon has 10 seconds of penalties, and that's assuming he doesn't get disqualified altogether for what he did to Fratters under the yellow. Um, so yeah, I think W is still walking out here with second, assuming he doesn't lose the position to Gusty, assuming he doesn't have another accident. It's six laps to go right now. Gusty is there with DRS. He's close.
closing, but he's not close enough to make a dive at the end of the main straightaway. This is the only real battle left on track. And a reminder, these two are... Oh, and Collie Boy, oh, another yeah, accident. Oh, let's see. Um, this will put him a lap down, actually. More than likely, yeah. I think. Oh god, he spins again, and it's right in the middle of the racetrack, and here comes the leader, so yeah, he will go a lap down. Oh, I'm actually... Um, a thing that I said earlier about uh, qualifying bands when we were going through that with Plastic Love, I've seen that some shop had one, it was actually changed to a race band for this week, so that's why he's not racing. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, oh, Zane, your oh, race leader, Zane no. has just crashed on the main straightaway! Oh, that's him gone. Oh, and it's out! He's out! He's dead! Your race leader, your pool center is out of the race! That was a very bizarre one, because it, I, literal, it was very weird. And now there are only six cars left on the racetrack, and this battle between Chubby and Gussie has just turned into the battle for the race win! This also promotes Fratters up into fourth. Twitch Boys will get fifth and Collie Boy, despite going a lap down, he's gonna end up at least sixth. Now Mr. Neon's in the lead. Yeah, but and he here's the other wasn't. thing, Fiend had not yet yeah, Fiend had not yet completed the 90% mark. A tenth of this race would be three about four laps. We were not at lap 33 with four laps to go. So I don't think Fiend's gonna walk out here with any points. If that accident happened one lap later, Fiend would have at least taken seventh place points. But as it stands right now, I don't think Fiend's gonna walk out here with any points. And now it's up to Chip it's now in Jobby's hands, because with Mr. Neon's penalties taken into account, he will take he, he will inherit the race win. After being involved in three different accidents as well and get penalized out of the pole position, he could end up massively extending his points lead. I thought last week at Spa was a championship defining drive. If he can keep this together to the end, this would be a championship defining drive. Yeah. But again, we still have three and a half laps to go and Shelby is on very worn hard tires. He's the fastest person on track right now, without a doubt. <sighs> this race. Mm -hmm. Still better than Catalonia, but... Christ, this, I've never, I've, we've seen a race before, I think you were with me last year when we did this in X3 and we had that yeah. massive last like accident where we only had seven drivers finish. I thought you couldn't get more ridiculous at this track than that, but we're down to only six drivers. And honestly, I would not be surprised if we saw A1, second, third, or fourth suddenly have an accident to take them out. Also, Collie Boy is on track on soft tires right now. I think he's going to try and get fastest lap point. going to be between Kali and Mr. Neon for fastest lap points right now as I look at the race director at the moment. Uh, let's see fastest lap. Who has fastest lap at the moment? All right, I can't figure out how to make this work under short notice, so I'm not going to keep this up. I'll just look at the end. But I'm pretty sure at this point it is still Mr. Neon who has fastest lap. And at the moment, the gap between first and second is five seconds. I don't know how it's going to go for Mr. Neon. We honestly could see him, either he's going to keep these 10 second penalties, or he's going to get disqualified from the race altogether. Yeah. If he keeps the 10 second penalties, he's still going to fall to third. But considering what he did, I honestly imagine he'll probably get disqualified or get hit with an even larger time penalty post-race. Um...
I don't know. Also, I do want to go ahead and mention one other person, Twitch Boys. He was fighting for the podium all day. He, he had the pace to keep up with me, although not anything to make a move on him. He had an accident, and it honestly looked like he was out of this race for good with that accident, but he has survived, persevered. He is now in fifth position. Still in a relatively decent spot at this point in the race, so great job from Twitch Boys for being able to keep it together. He has been involved in an accident, but has recovered to fifth. And then Fratters, I said very early on, that car seems very, very difficult. I would award him driver of the day. I don't know if I give it between him and Shelby Spark right now, because both of them have put on impressive drives. But Fratters could easily walk out of here with fourth, maybe third, depending on how time penalties and how the officials deal with Mr. Neon. Just being able to survive in that McLaren, which has looked absolutely evil all day today. Yeah. I, I think that could be a driver of the day award right there. Now, Twitch Boys is right there behind Fratters. He's going to try and make this overtake happen on these last on this last lap and a half. I'll be interested to see if he can make it stick. I don't think By the he... way, still big. Yeah. You look like a... I think Twitch Boys will have one attempt at this, and that will be going down the main straightaway, and he'll have to outbreak them and abuse those fresher tires that Twitch Boys has against Fratters to get it. He does, he does have the fact, though, that Fratters has got that five-second time power. He... he... He probably could get out of the move though, so he has to go for the move, which he's doing now on the outside. Into turn one, Fratus does have the inside line. All oh, contact on the rear. Contact. Fratus still has the position. Oh, he's going to Neon, 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 Neon cross the line. Yep. With the fastest lap of the day, but will be Chubby Smirk who wins the race. Gussie, well the game says Gussie comes home third, but I think he's going to get up gate second. And Twitch Boys is going to walk home fourth over Fratters. Very aggressive at the end, but Twitch Boys made it stick. And Fratters is somehow going to drag that thing to the end. And I think I saw at the very end, Colin Boy take the fastest lap as well. I'll check at the end, but uh... Yeah. yeah. Coming in the line, Twitch Boys gets fourth, Fratters will take fifth, and there we are. That's race over. Only six finishers. My goodness. And Collie Boy gets driver of the day. I can understand that. Yeah. But we have so few drivers, frankly, I'm just going to try and invite everyone who was still running at the end. Alright, coming into the party right now is Chubby Spark. Chubby, you have taken home a victory somehow. I don't know how, but you did it. Um... Just walk us through your ra through the race, starting from that penalty and qualifying. Yeah, so as Plastic Love, I think, was saying in the chat, um, everybody was just crashing, and I spun in um, just fucking sympathy, I guess. So yeah, I spun there, and then the Alfa Romeo of, I think, Dave Ewer came spinning right into me, and I got a five-place grid penalty there. That was unfortunate. But I got pull, which helped me get a higher grid position, so that's nice. That race took forever. Oh my god. I felt like it was two hours. But, um... Well, you were involved in that massive first lap accident. What happened there? I was... I had a really good start. I passed Boothy, um... On the inside, on the start. But then, I don't know who spun Meerkat, I'm guessing. And I just went into it because I was boxed in, and I got wing damage, so I had to pit, go to the back and everything. And then every safety car I would probably pit, but last two safety cars I just winged it on uh, hard. So 
I, I don't know how I did that. To be honest with you. I'm terrible at this place. <laughs> I got so well, lucky with this place. Well, for being terrible at this place, you got extremely lucky because one of your championship rivals obviously weren't was not allowed to show up for the race, and the other two you ended up finishing ahead of. One of them after dominating the race before crashing out on his own. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, I said last week was the championship-defining drive. I think this week is an even more championship-defining drive. I don't know. I mean, Gussie's still in it. He, he finished third, right? Yeah, he might even get second. Post race, I don't know how penalties will go post race, but he did get third. So, yeah, so that that's gonna be a. Do I get the Do I get the points for pole? I think you would still get points for pole because you had the fastest. Okay, lap. and then I, I think, would... I'm not sure. That's how I That's how I understand it would work, but I could be wrong. So. Yeah. Well, okay. that... well, either way, congratulations on another victory. <laughs> All right, so now one last question. Next week is Monza. Can you bring home a win for the Scuderia Ferrari at the home track? Thing is, I'm traveling to go see the Tennessee versus Ole Miss game, so I have no idea if I'll be, be, be back in time. That's the thing. I hope I can be back by at least like 11.45. If not, I'm kind of screwed. All right, well, here's hoping you can make it back. Even if you misqualify, I would not want to see you see a run at Monza without the star Ferrari driver for X3. <laughs> Yeah, too bad Schumacher couldn't get in here. He was having every issue possible. <laughs> yeah, that was the other rough thing. All right, well, thanks very much, Shelby. Also, I want to go ahead and talk to our second-place finisher, right, Mr. Neon. Neon, um, I'm just going to ask very bluntly, what in the world was going on there? You pitted under the yellow flag, so it put you in the back of the field. You overtook two cars under the safety car and then ran into fratters on two separate occasions – under the safety car before kind of just what was going on there i have no idea i'm not entirely sure if the lobby was a little bit glitched it seems like we had one maybe two safety cars that were just there was no need for them it just seemed to be glitched i think a little bit um but it kept allowing me to overtake people during the safety car it was saying overtake them so i did and then i overtook someone and then it told me to give the place back um, I was just eager to get back out there and race. I think I was a little bit frustrated. I hadn't, I hadn't had the best race um, so far, and then I was just a little frustrated. And people were going a little bit slower during the, the safety car, and I, I bumped the back of uh, Fradas a couple of times, ever so slightly. And it, yeah, it gave me the the ten seconds. All right. Well, you did a good job walking off with second and then eventually inheriting the lead. Did you see what happened with Fiend at the front though? Um, I think it's that it's that final um, it's that final corner. There's a little bit of bank, and if people are oversteering a little bit too much, um, it, you just lose it. You completely lose it, and I think that's what happened to him. It happened um, yesterday in the Dev League that I'm in. Uh, I think there was about four safety cars like, yesterday as well. People just kept losing it there all the time. All right, well, it wasn't a win, but you came home second. I don't know how penalties will or won't work for you post-race, but uh, congratulations on bringing, home, bringing the car home the way you did, and that choice to get on mediums definitely worked out for you in the end. Yeah, thank you. All right, one other, one more driver I want to talk to real quickly, and that's Fratters. Fratters, I rode on board with you for a lap in Q3. That McLaren looked absolutely evil. I honestly did not think you were going to make it to the end. Not only did you make it to the end of the race, you walked out here with a top five finish. What do you have to say about that? Um, I mean, honestly, to begin with, um, I did a lot of, um, well, I said a lot of. I actually did like 20 minutes of practice this week. Um, I, I tried to set up what everyone else would have been using, and it's just spin central. So I just went with default setup with like the one tweak. So I knew the car would feel like a truck, but I knew I could at least not spin. Um, but in Q3, I spun like four times, so that, that, that didn't work. Uh, but I mean, Honestly, it's just survival, and I, I don't I don't know how I survived. Um, incidents left, right, and centre. Um, I got ten seconds, which maybe might come off at the end, so I might be looking at a P four. But 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's just it's just playing the long game um, and just trying to stay out of trouble. And I finally, finally survived a race, so I'm happy about that. You survived a race in what seemed to be the most chaotic race of the season. Uh, I would, I'll just say this. I said this very early on because after the first seven laps, there were only ten cars left, and I said to my co-broadcaster, Torpedo, hey, look, if Fratters can stick this together and make it to the end of this race, he would get driver of the day from me. Honestly, I think that you should get driver of the day because that car was did not look good at all. I, I was I was a little bit nervous what, riding on board with you, and you still brought it home. So, outstanding job. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, yeah, I mean, towards the end, when uh, Twitch was catching me up, he was catching me at a right rate and it was like two seconds a lap and I knew that he was going to catch me at some point so it was either look after my car try and look after my tyres or push and risk um, crashing which I think I made the right call but losing fourth place on the last lap is uh, sucks a little but yeah I mean to, to just keep the car on the island and not actually spin or anything. Um, I'm really happy with that. Can't complain at all. All right. Well, congratulations. Also, just want to say thanks for jumping in and talking with us post race. Uh, we also tried to gain other people in here. Couldn't get. I do want to ask one other thing. What did you see in that massive first lap accident? Oh God. Um, so all I saw was a car flying across the screen so i braked quite heavily because i was going to get taken out by it and i had someone hit me up the arse and that's where i think a lot of people lost wings and stuff because i broke quite heavily to try and avoid the car flying in the middle of the track and i think that's what caused a lot of people issues because i was paying attention and probably braked maybe a little bit heavier than i should have done but at least I survived it and I didn't get any damage. I was, you know, just straight reactions. Whereas I think some of the other guys didn't see the car spin in front. So they came flying out of the last corner and just kept on hitting people and hitting people. So it's, it was a crazy, crazy um, incident, which I was kind of a part of, but for no fault of my own, I think. Yeah, you make a very good point. Yeah, we didn't get to see the very start of it from our screen. It just we looked back and all of a sudden we saw like three cars sideways across the track and people just kept plowing into the scenario. It just kept getting worse and worse the longer we looked at it. It was like a train wreck. Yeah, I mean, you could say that about the entire race. It was, uh, I think the longer it went on, the scarier it became. Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, just want to say once again, thanks for coming in. There's not Unless you have anything else to say, uh, we'll be looking forward to hopefully talking with you next week. All right. Cheers, guys. Much appreciated. Thank you. All right. Well, it seems very obvious to me that uh, we should all be glad that we're going to put Xanavort behind us at this point, Torpedo, because that race was a mess, to say the least. Yeah, it was, and... Vex 2 in an hour probably will be the same. Mm -hmm. Well, if they need someone to broadcast X2, you know, I'm con I'm tempted to join in just because it will probably be more chaos. So, by mm -hmm. the way, in an hour on the main channel, you will be able to catch x X2 Division. I have been your host, Insane Leader 13, and I've been joined by x Torpedo. This has been X3. In a week's time, you can catch the series when it goes to Monza. But until then, stay safe, everyone, and farewell.